Okay, I'm going to show you guys all the ways that I know to integrate secant x. First of all, I will show you guys how to get the standard result. And for many of you guys, you guys may not like this way because the first step is not so obvious. In my opinion, I will agree with you as well. But you know, there are something that you just have to let me tell you what the secret is. And then you have to learn it so you know what it is, all right? Anyway, to integrate secant x, this is the standard result. What we do first is that we will keep the secant x right here. And we'll multiply the top and bottom by secant x plus tangent x. So let me just put this down for you guys. We multiply the top by secant x plus tangent x. And then right away, we divide it by secant x plus tangent x. All right? And you may be wondering, what good does this do? Well, now, if you just go ahead and distribute the secant x into the parentheses. And you will see that this is the same as integral secant x times secant x, that's secant squared x, and secant x times tangent x. We write it down as plus secant x tangent x, right? And this is over secant x plus tangent x. Okay, now, check this out. If you look at the denominator, what's the derivative of secant x? It happens to be secant x tangent x, which is right here, right? And what's the derivative of tangent x? Which is secant squared x, and that's right here. So right here, if you can just do a u substitution real quick, let u equal to the denominator, and everything will work out nicely. So let's do that real quick. We'll finish this up by saying let u equal to the denominator, which is secant x plus tangent x. And differentiate this real quick, we get du, which it's going to give us secant x times tangent x plus the derivative of tangent x is just secant squared x and then put a parenthesis and this is with the differential dx, right? And now, just to save one step, we can do the following. As you can see, this right here is precisely what we have on the top. Altogether, this right here with the dx, this is equal to du. So, let me just say, this is the integral of 1 over, and let me put the du on the side already. du, it's this, which is exactly why I circled in red. And in the denominator, that's my u, right? So we are just integrating 1 over u, du. And now, you see, this is going to give us ln absolute value of u. We are not done yet because we have to go back to the x world u is this, so at the end we have ln absolute value secant x plus tangent x. And then we are done. At the end, I will put a plus c right here. I usually just like to put a plus c all the way at the end when we are doing integrals. And this right here is it. This is the standard result. Okay, for the second way, as we know, secant x is the same as 1 over cosine x, right? So we can look at this integral as the integral of 1 over cosine x, dx. And now what? Can we do this by u sub right now? Not really, because if we let u equal to cosine x, we know du will be negative sine x dx, and unfortunately, we don't have any sine x factor to help us out, right? Keep in mind, sometimes when we do integrals, the more the better. And also, in terms of integral, sine x and cosine x, they will usually help each other out. We don't have enough to work with at the moment. I want to think about some way so that I can squeeze out the sine x factor to help us out, okay? Unfortunately, I only have cosine to the first power x at the moment. I don't know this too well. What I do know is I know a famous identity, namely sine x squared plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. In another word, I can tell you, let me write it down, cosine squared x equals to 1 minus sine squared x, isn't it? Well, in that case, why don't I just multiply the bottom by cosine x and then do the same on the top, so I can work with cosine squared x and I can use this identity, right? So let's make that happen. Multiply the bottom by cosine x, likewise do the same on the top. This, it's the same as saying, Integral on the top is just a cosine x now, and on the bottom is cosine squared x. And then we have the dx right here. And of course, I will 
keep the top as cosine x and on the bottom I'm going to replace this with 1 minus sine square x right and let me write this down as following 1 minus sine x and then to the second power like that and then we have the dx like this okay and this is the same as cosine square x now we can use u sub let u equal to just the sine x once again let u equal to just the sine x and let me show you guys all the steps u equal to sine x du will be derivative of cos uh, derivative of sine x is cosine x dx right and you will see this right here is the integral on the top this is cosine x dx right here cosine x dx is the same as du so I can just put down a 1 and then let me put down a du on the side right and then this is over the 1 is still the 1 minus the sine x is the u so we have 1 over 1 minus u squared and once again the du is both of this thing and now what's the integral of 1 over 1 minus u squared du well, this is something that we have to know. You have two ways to do it. <laughs> so yes, this is the second way to integrate secant x. And once we get to this right here, we have two ways. And let me show you guys uh, the first way to do this, the easier way. So right here, here's the idea. We know that if I differentiate, right? This is the derivative version first. If I differentiate the inverse tangent x, this is just the original inverse tangent, right? This is just for review purpose. This right here gives us 1 over 1 plus x squared, right? This is something that we should know really well from Calc 1. But this is the plus in between, but here is a minus. Well, if you want to have the minus version, this is actually the inverse hyperbolic version of the tangent x. So let me write that down as well. Derivative of the inverse hyperbolic tangent x, right? This is the inverse hyperbolic tangent x this gives you precisely 1 over 1 minus x squared okay in another word when you want to integrate 1 over 1 minus something squared you just get the inverse hyperbolic tangent of the input right here the input is u so you can finish this up by saying this is the same as saying inverse hyperbolic tangent and the input right here is u okay and then what's u sine x so i'll write this down finally we can say the answer is the inverse hyperbolic tangent of sine x and then we are done we put a plus c right here okay so this is the first way in the second way to integrate secant x and we have another approach for this guy as well. Let me do this right here for you guys real quick. This, this is called the partial fraction. Here is the deal. Without knowing this, right? Without using the hyperbolic functions, the inverse hyperbolic tangent, what you can do is you can factor the denominator. So in other words, you see this is 1 minus u squared. I can factor this to be 1 minus u times 1 plus u, isn't it? And then this is going to be the same as saying that's integrate you can break this fraction into two little fraction and the first fraction will have one minus u as the denominator and then on the top it's just going to be a constant which i don't know what it is at the moment okay and then the second one i will just put on plus one plus u and we also have another constant because the bottom is a, a linear term so i put on a b like this on the top du like this okay just like that and now the question is well how do i find out the a and the b you can do what we call the cover up method i'm not looking at this anymore i'm just looking at this and that okay so let's see if we can uh, work this out real quick i need to figure out number a this is how you do it look at the denominator which is one minus u come back to the original which is right here what you want to do is cover up the same denominator, which is the 1 minus u. And then you ask yourself, how can you make this factor equal to 0? Well, when you cover this up, you have to let u equal to 1, so that 1 minus 1 will be 0, right? So go ahead, 
Copy this up. U is equal to 1 now. Plugging this 1 into this U. And you have what? 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. Okay? So once again, 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 half. So come here, I will tell you the A is 1 half. Next, how can I figure out the B? Well, same thing. The bottom here is 1 plus U. I will come here, I will cover this up. How can I make 1 plus U equal to 0? U has to be negative 1, right? So I cover this up. U is negative 1 now. Plug in negative 1 into this U. 1 minus negative 1. It's the same as 1 plus 1 on the bottom, which is 2. 1 half as well. That's for B. Okay? Just like that. And now let me just write this down real quick for you guys. This is the same as saying, let me bring the 1 half to the front, and then we integrate 1 over 1 minus u. I'll close this, and then bring the 1 half to the front, and now we'll have the integral. We're looking at this as two different integrals now. 1 over 1 plus u, du. This is still 1 half, no problem on that. Integrate this. Remember, now the denominator is just a linear term. What's the derivative of 1 minus u? It's a negative 1, right? You have to make sure you divide it by the derivative whenever this is just a number. Divide it by negative 1. It's the same as just multiply by negative 1 like this in the front. And then this is going to give us ln, absolute value, and the bottom is 1 minus u, like this. So the blue part is for the integral. And then let's do this right here. Plus 1 half is still 1 half. And integrate this. The derivative of 1 plus u is just 1. So we pretty much don't have to do anything. This is just going to give us ln absolute value of 1 plus u, OK? Can we do more? Yes, this is how. Take the 1 half to the front. And then this right here is negative ln absolute value 1 minus u. And then we add it with ln absolute value 1 plus u. And you see that by one of the log property, we know we can combine this now. This is negative. That means this will go down to the denominator. And this part right here is going to be on the numerator. Let me still write down the 1 half first, though. And then we will have ln, put the absolute value first, and then the fraction bar ready. This was a positive ln term. So this inside goes on the top, 1 plus u. This has negative right here. So this right here goes down to the bottom. 1 minus u. Are we done? Almost, because we have to get back to the x world. u is what? u is sine x. So finally, we can say this is equal to 1 over 2. ln absolute value 1 plus u is sine x now. Right? Plugging back. And then this is 1 minus sine x. And we are done. Finally, we can put down plus c right here. Okay, And of course, this right here was the result if you use that, which is legit. And in fact, this expression and this expression is actually identical. You can check out our video in the description. I showed you guys how to go from here to here, right? And the C in this case doesn't really matter. Just check out the video. And now, let me show you guys the adult version on how to integrate secant x. Okay, before I show you guys the last way, I want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers. His name is Dominic. He was the one who told me how to integrate this with complex definition of cosine. So check this out. First, we'll still write this down as the integral of 1 over cosine x, just like how we did it earlier. However, instead of multiplying the top and bottom by another cosine x, we are going to use the complex definition of cosine x. And you can check out the video in the description, but let me write this down for you guys right here. Cosine x, it's the same as e to the i x plus e to the negative i x all over 2. And this right here is for the cosine x, all right? And then we still have the dx. And now, as you can see, the i shows up. So this is the adult version because we're using complex number. And, of course, this is 1 over something over 2, which is a constant multiple of 2, right? So I can put the 2 in the front, right here, and then we have the integral, and this is 1 over, this is 
e to the i x and then plus if you would like you know this is the same as saying 1 over e to the plus the i x right and then you have the dx and now what this is still a complex fraction let's fix this how multiply the top and bottom by e to the i x isn't it so let's do that e to the i x here and then multiply this by e to the i x here and we will see this is going to be the 2 in the front integral still an integral on the top we have e to the i x over e to the i x times e to the i x let me write it down for you guys like this parentheses with e to the i x inside and then square yeah this times that second power and then plus this times that just you know one pretty much and then we have the dx next to this how can we integrate this well this is e to the i x don't let the i bother you too much right you can think about the i as like seven if you will like for now if you differentiate this well the function part repeat and then we happen to have this function part on the top with that being said we can actually just do this by u sub right so let's come here and let u equal to e to the i x and then differentiate both sides du is equal to you know e to the something this right here stays the same for now and you have to ask yourself what's the derivative of i times x just treat i as a constant so you know the derivative of i x is just going to be an i like that and then we are talking about differential so let's put the dx down like that and in this case i would like to show you to isolate the dx on both sides so you will see the cancellation much better so divide this on both sides we get dx equal du over i e to the i x and now we come back here this is equal to 2 in the front integral on the top we have e to the i x on the bottom this is u right that's my u u square plus 1 dx which is the same as du over i times e to the i x and now what as you can see e to the i x cancel out with this e to the i x aha now what we have a 1 over i right here we can take that to the front right so in the front we will have 2 over i and then we are looking at this as the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1 du what's this this is the regular version of the inverse tangent right because of the u squared plus 1 so we know this is going to be 2 over i and the result is the inverse tangent no more h right inverse tangent of the input here which is the u like that are we done no u is that so we have to put that down so you can see this is 2 over i but we just don't feel comfortable when we have the i in the denominator right therefore let's go ahead multiply the bottom by i the top by i yeah i times i is i squared which will get negative one negative one on the bottom we just have a negative right here and then we have the two i right here let's write it down and then this is the inverse tangent u is that so we put it down e to the i x and then we're all done so this right here we can put down a plus c aha the complex answer for the integral of secant x okay so these are the four results that i know for the integral of secant x if you know more please comment down below and let me know and also you can let me know which of these results that you like the most bye